Hey, KU fans, welcome back to KU Sports Extra here at KUSports.com. I'm Matt Tate, this is Tom Keegan, and football season's over, so there is no overlap, except that it is coaching search season. And so it, it is every other year around here. Yeah, that's true. This is the third time since 2009 that we've done a coaching search. Uh, I guess I should say that KU's doing the coaching search. We're just following the ever-living heck out of it. And we eventually, when we get into our retirement years, we're going to be consultants and we're going to have our own business to right. run coaching right. searches. Yeah. yeah, because we've got so much experience and so much good knowledge on how these things go. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, but right now let's kick off with just the regular KU Sports Extra starting point, and that's the good news. That is one good thing for sure. It's time to get into this coaching search, but the bigger things that are important and good news this week, I think, are the fact that KU Volleyball is hosting in the NCAA tournament for the third year in a row. Granted, it's at the Expo Center in Speaker because of the basketball conflict on Friday night, but three years in a row of making the tournament is huge news around here. Three years in a row of hosting it is a whole different stratosphere. That's really a great model for how to turn around a program yeah. or how to build a program. Because uh, the last five years or so, you just saw it coming. The, uh, Ray Bouchard hired a couple of great assistants, and things are really humming there. This is a young team. Yeah, that's the most impressive part. Seven new faces on this volleyball team, and they're right back where they were the last couple of years, hosting the first round against University of Arkansas Little Rock. Should be an awesome atmosphere over there. Even though it won't be as good as you're expecting here, it's still going to be pretty cool. And I think the diehard volleyball fans that pack Horsch every night – They'll be over there in Topeka rooting on this team. So two wins here, Friday and Saturday night, would get them to Ames for the Sweet 16 for the second year in a row. Kudos to those guys for sure. What's the bad news, Tom? Well, the bad news is that the coaching search continues. Uh, I think now would have been a good time to hire someone so you can start re uh, stealing recruits from schools Huge. that don't have a coach Huge. right now, including a few of those right here in Northeast Kansas. Yeah, that's definitely the biggest question is, is – if you had all that time and you had nine weeks to prepare, uh, at least to prepare a plan, you know, then, then maybe, maybe that speaks to, hey, gosh, these candidates are really not separating themselves, or maybe that well, just speaks I, to... I think if this is a process that he decided he was going to go right. through, and it's a reaction to going too quickly on Charlie Weiss and not vetting Charlie yeah. Weiss, just taking a recommendation instead of making a lot of calls about him yeah so extra cautious this time extra around, cautious yeah. you always have a reaction to the previous hire that goes wrong and this is how Shane Zenger's doing it differently yeah that's I, I don't think anyone can blame him for that even if it is bad news at least it's showing that he learned something from the last yeah time. it's better too much than too little but I'm just antsy in terms of wanting them to get out there and start stealing recruits right yeah well I understand you're antsy about stealing recruits you always are you love that uh, <laughs> let's talk about it real quick though the candidates uh, this week has all been about phone interviews and kind of maybe pinpointing which guys they want to actually do face-to-face -face interviews with uh, I don't think it's any secret at all that Clint Bowen's going to be one of those guys that's right. been stated pretty much and, and he certainly earned that right I think David Beatty's another guy. I think Tim Beck is another guy, and, and possibly Ed Warner. Uh, if you had to put me up against it or, or I had to give you an answer, I think those might be your four finalists. So it kind of is ending where it started. Absolutely. Shane Singer wanted someone with a connection to Kansas, with experience working here, basically, but he wanted to see who else was out there. Yeah. Uh, Matt Wells of Utah State withdrew, understandably, because he's a candidate at Nebraska. And he'd be risking too much. Right yeah. now, he's got such a great resume. You come here, you know you're going to have at least one, probably two really bad seasons. Right. And then are you still a hot candidate? Right. You know, and, and we'll, we'll look at what – there's no guarantee that anybody can turn this around. Right. Yeah, I think that's the and exact same Fuente scenario. Fuente similar. Fuente, right. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to stick at Memphis, it looks like, and make his jump down the road to a, probably a better scenario, a better job where he can win right away because – yeah, he's done a great job at Memphis, and he right. did a great job as a coordinator before that. The last thing he wants to do is come get worn out in two years here and then have that sort of star you know, fade a little bit. You, right. you don't want to do that. So uh, it'll be very interesting. I still think this will be a, a done deal next week at some point, and I think you are probably on that same timeline. Would you agree? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. It'll be done next week. Uh, some recruits are coming in for visits on the 12th, so it'll be done before that. Yeah, I think it comes down to – 
David Beatty or Clint Bowen, and I think it's a, a real close race between the two. If you've seen the percentage wheel at all, you've been following that on our blogs and stuff, it's, it's uh, David Beatty at the top of that right now, but Clint Bowen's still very much alive and, and right there. All right, well, real quick, we've got a little special treat. I think our first ever KU Sports Extra guest. I know so because the, the negotiations with Gary Bedore... Not working. Well... Uh, right now, we're the ones who came away from the table because his demands were just outrageous. But you never know. I uh, could sit down at the table again. We could initiate it. Right now, the way I'm feeling is that the initiation's going to have to come from Gary Bedore. It's going to be age. hard for us to step back in there. I, and here's the deal. You guys know this. If you read us, if you follow us, right now, I'm pretty optimistic that Gary's going to be on this show someday. I, I think Tom's probably... Not feeling that way right now. At this now. point, I'm not feeling it. Okay. Feelings can change, yeah. but right now I'm a little bruised. Yeah. Well, let's hope we can get Gary Bedore on. Who we were able to get on is a guy that's going to be pretty busy here very not soon. Not as busy as Gary, but quite busy. No, not as busy as Gary. Not as busy as the next head coach of KU football, but pretty darn busy. And we were lucky enough to get him to stop by our studio here and talk a little KU sports with us. So here he is, Santa Claus. Thanks for joining us, Santa Claus. I understand you're in Kansas scouting the chimneys. You do that since you've got to go through all of there's new safety regulations. Uh, everything going okay with the chimneys in Kansas? Chimneys are looking good. Uh, OSHA has put down some pretty stringent regulations for me to abide by, but uh, I'm going to find a way around that. And you're going to find a way to squeeze down the chimneys. Always been a mystery to me, but a lot of things about Santa Claus are a mystery. But you don't have to share. You're like a magician who doesn't have to share his secrets. It is magic. That's all I can say. One, Beautiful. Yeah, one thing that's not a mystery, and some of you guys might not know this, but a lot of people do. You played a little football in your younger days. Am I right? I was the uh, starting left guard for uh, North Pole State University in the Reindeer League up there at the North Pole. Uh, we had quite a run there for a while. Uh, it included the, the reindeers and uh, reindeer. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> English wasn't one of my big, uh, big subjects there at North Pole State, but uh, yeah, I understand. The only, really, the team that really got a lot of good players from North Pole State was the Green Bay Packers because they wanted guys who could play in the cold. The, the frozen tundra. We were yes, the original yeah. frozen tundra. Because right. John, John Facenda played for North, and not a lot of people know that, but he North played Pole for State. North Pole State. What years? Oh, back in the '30s. Okay. Yeah. Good times. Back, back with Santa. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I was there from the beginning. Well, so. Santa, we have some requests from some fans of KU, what they'd like to see under the tree for the athletic department. And, Matt, why don't you get going with, uh, with some of those and then yeah. I'll join you. Well, sounds good. You know, this is a tough time because they're looking for a new coach. Do you follow KU sports at all? Stringently. Do you? Okay. Well, good. This will be easy then because you'll know a little of what we're talking about. Hey, football's looking for a new coach. You know about that, obviously. So I think the fans are really just looking for somebody with some energy, somebody that gets it, somebody that understands what it takes to not only win and succeed at Kansas, but also to build something of substance here. I don't know if any coaches are available. I don't know if you can have your elves whip something up, but you think that could be something you could bring to KU fans? Well, there's, there's a lot of candidates out there right. that would fit the bill, but uh, from what I understand about the program here at KU, you want exactly the right guy right. for the job. And uh, that, in, in my mind, the scouting I've done, it, it narrows it down to about eight or ten guys. Um, I am going to examine that closely, and if one of them emerges... I'll put that uh, in, in your stocking there at uh, the administration office, and uh, you guys will have yourself a coach. So there's room on the sleigh? There's always room on the sleigh. Okay. Yeah, what now, else you got, well, this is a very common request from KU fans, but now that we have Santa right here sitting next to me, making me look thin by comparison, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to ask it. Is there any way you could get KU six consecutive victories in March, spilling into April? I've, uh, I've looked into that, and while Santa can't guarantee anything, because I don't know how good the KU program is going to be, and, and things like that only go to the best programs, but 
I think that's a distinct possibility. Well, you know what, though? Kansas just had a football coach who guaranteed a lot of things. He promised a lot. He <laughs> overpromised. So if he can promise a lot, why can't you just promise? I could promise, but Santa doesn't work the same way as that former coach. As a matter of fact, I, I've been trying to find him. I've got, uh, where is it? Yeah, I've got, I got a little sack of coal that I wanted to give this guy because he wasn't very good this year. And uh, I, if Tom, I Tom can get it to him, can I just <laughs> can I just leave this with you? Well, when you're when you're going to South Bend, just leave it in one of the stockings in South. Is Bend. that where he's at now? That's where he's at. But I, I've always wondered, you know, to show a boy that he's been a bad boy or a bad girl, you put coal in the stocking. What would be the equivalent? To show Santa that he's been a bad guy. Instead of leaving tick, uh, cookies, do you leave like salad with rye bread with not much dressing? Maybe yeah. rye bread. What what would be the equivalent? If you want to really make Santa mad, yeah, uh, leave me Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs. You don't tic, like Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs just bug the heck out of me. Wow. It's there like, you have it, right there. like I mean, trying to tell me I have bad breath and you've never even seen me. Right. That well, just. <laughs> Good. I wasn't going to say anything, but uh, Gooden Plenty's on Halloween were what did it for me. Yeah. Matt, what else do you think that the KU fan base, from what you've heard, wants to see under the tree? Yeah, I think it kind of ties into your last one about six wins in March, and that's some leadership, some obvious and clear-cut leadership for the basketball program. They don't have that senior point guard right now. They don't have a, a very vocal guy that's automatically a leader. Is there any way you can find Bill Self and his program a leader? Well, I can check into uh, Rudolph's eligibility. He leads okay. the uh, the team of reindeer on my sure, journeys. Right. That's an obvious thought. As yeah. long as there's not a game on Christmas Eve, um, if Rudolph has some eligibility left, I'd be happy to see if uh, we could get him. As long as you brought up Rudolph and we do have you here, can you just lay to, re the, to rest all those rumors about his red nose? I mean... Reindeer gossip. And what they say is Rudolph is a very heavy drinker, and that's why the nose is red. Wow. That may be the origin of his wow. red nose. Very serious. Yeah, and it, and but I'm happy to report that Rudolph has gone through the program. Good. He's, Great. Good. He's not drinking anymore, and he's or managed. any less. No. <laughs> no, he's he's completely done that's with that great. now. Well, he takes care of business every year, year in, year out. And that, that's exactly right. That's what KU needs, somebody that you can just count on to lead the team and, and to get you guys know, in the right spots. This comes up often, but I think Bill Self is such a strong leader. If everyone else on the floor is an equal leader, I, I think it, I think it works. Yeah, good point. He is, he is very capable of just putting talented guys in the right spot. What else? Any other ideas for uh, gifts that the KU Athletic Department might want this year? Well, I think if you could find... Five guys who are Alabama caliber blockers and just put them under the tree for Kansas. Give that next quarterback a shot. Even if the next quarterback resembles one of your elves, if he's got blockers, right. sometimes quarterbacks don't have to fit the prototype. Best quarterback here in recent memory was Todd Reesing. He was too small for the prototype. Big performances. So can you just guarantee a great offensive line? Because making them guarantee are, things again. Are you looking for a zone blocking scheme? <laughs> hey, I think they'll wow. as long as they're blocking. Santa is into it. Were you in alignment for Rangers? Well, I was State? a left guard. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah, this he, he could play. I mean he was all conference. Blindside yeah. Santa. Blindside Santa, that's what they called me. All right, well, probably the last thing, and I think this is a big one that, that KU fans would really, really, really like to see, and even more than KU fans, probably the KU administration would really like to see this. You know, everybody likes to get pajamas or, or toys or whatever, but sometimes it's just cold, hard cash that's the best thing to get. Is there any way you can find some cash? Ooh. Because they're trying hard to renovate Memorial Stadium. They really want to bring it into the modern era. Any cash that you could scrounge up, you know, uh, pass the hat, ring the bell, whatever, that would go. I think they're looking for something between seventy and one hundred and twenty million. That's all, not too much. Okay. Well, you know, a lot of that depends on the boosters, right. and if they've been good boys and girls, Santa can provide them with some extra cash, 
And then it'll be <laughs> out of the... Would you print it in your basement? <laughs> Santa's got... He's magic. I'm telling there you. There you go. Well, then get to some cornerbacks who can fly because they've got two great cornerbacks who are graduating. Yeah. So teach some cornerbacks how to fly. Well, obviously, KU knows how to produce football players because the Broncos have three <laughs> starters that went to KU. Santa said it, not me. Yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> No, 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 Santa loves all teams equally. Yeah. But those KU players that are on on the professional teams, I have a special place in my Steven heart. Steven Johnson, me. Chris Harris, and of course, last but not least, Aqib Tlaib. I spent a little bit of time on the naughty list. He yes. did, but you know what? He's so darned interesting and so darn talented right. that you can't ever stay mad at Aqib Tlaib. Well, then, then that's like Rudolph. When Rudolph was having his problems, Santa stuck with him. And uh, so, Akib. You didn't enable him, though, did you? No, sir. Okay. Carrots and water every Christmas. That's the diet. Yeah, yeah. Well, Santa, thanks a million for stopping by. I know you're busy. I'm sure KU fans are going to be very excited about just the, the possibility that these gifts. Obviously, you don't get everything you want for Christmas every year. Kids know that. Fans know that. So, even if a few of these things show up under the tree, it'd be pretty cool for KU fans in the, in the KU Athletic Department. And on a personal note, thanks you... Thanks for coming in. You and Mrs. Claus might want to try to mix in a salad here and there. <laughs> all right, well, there it is. That's uh, everything KU fans could want under their tree. I don't know if all that stuff will fit under the tree. I'll tell you what, Santa's quite the X's and O's guy <laughs> yeah, with the football. He kind of impressive. threw me for a curve there. Yeah, well, he's got some playing experience, as you heard him say. He was happy. I think he was a little too braggy about the playing experience. Well, he's Santa Claus. How can you not have a big ego when kids are telling you you're the greatest yeah. and their jaws drop when they see you? That's going to make your head get a little fat, Good not point. to mention the rest of your body. Good point, definitely. Well, appreciate Santa Claus dropping by. Let's jump right back into it with prediction time for KU Florida on Friday night. Uh, who do you got in this game, Tom? Well, I like Kansas by 10 points. I think the home crowd will juice them. I think they're coming in here with confidence after winning an eight-team tournament, even though there were only really two strong teams, right. Kansas and Michigan State. The other teams were, you know, the separation between two and three was pretty large. Yeah. Marquette got third in the tournament. Just thought I'd throw that little who, who, plug in for who, the alma mater. Marquette, I've never heard the of that. Two different guards scored, had 30-point games. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I, I think that you're at that stage with Kansas basketball where you're, can, where you're confident but not overconfident. Yeah. And they're really – and at home, that's a dangerous combination. Totally agree. I think they're in a really good spot right now. And, and I think that Florida – you know what you're going to get with Billy Donovan's teams. You know they're going to come in and play tough and play fast and be physical and all that. But I think bringing them to Allen Fieldhouse, much the way it was tough for KU to go down to their place last year, I think that's too much to ask for a team that lost as much as Florida did from last season and is a little bit reeling right now. So I've got KU 79-65 in this game. Similar score. Um, I don't know your score, but 10 points around that number. 69-59. Uh, 69-59. Right. Fair enough. Who's your primetime pick? in that Friday night showdown. Mine is Cliff Alexander. He plays with a lot of energy. He uh, had zero defensive rebounds in one game, so the next game you see him go and crash right. the defensive boards. <laughs> He's so eager to please his coach and so talented and has such long arms that I think you're just going to see a steady improvement from Cliff Alexander. If he could find a way to foul a little less, he could – play 30 minutes and the more he plays the more productive he can be yeah he's sort of like having a blank canvas right now you know you can just kind of shape him and, and create whatever you want like you said if you tell him you were terrible on the glass the next game he's going to be good on the glass yeah. if you tell him he's hey quit shooting that jumper use the hook the next game he's going to use the hook it's, right it's it's really cool to see a guy that willing to be coached and 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 that good at delivering too so cliff alexander i'm going to go with wayne selton 0 for 10 the last time we saw him people are making a ton out of his shooting slump right now he is only shooting 27 percent from the field i think he's going to fix that this week i think the week off will help him obviously he's been in the gym shooting trying to work out his shot whatever he's got to do i think he's going to find a way to get some shots to fall this week and the thing that's great about wayne is he's been impacting the aim even though he hasn't been making shots well you look at his minutes and he leaves them out there a lot right. for a reason if he's not making his shots obviously it's not for shooting he knows what he's doing out there. There's nothing he doesn't do pretty well. He rebounds pretty well pretty for well. guard. Yeah. He defends well. He uh, passes passer. well. Excellent. Yeah, passer. so 
Right now, the only thing he's not doing well is shooting. Yeah, and they don't seem overly worried about that. It seems like that's just a matter of time. I'm going to go ahead and play the gamble and say that it's time is now. So uh, Wayne Selden, Cliff Alexander, and a couple of KU wins. Uh, makes sense. Let's finish this thing off, as always, with the most obnoxious man in sports. <laughs> and Tom, you are up first. Who's your guy? Well, you know, normally I don't like to talk about officiating at all because I think it's a lot of excuse making. But here in a game, I'm going to talk about an official who was neither a negative or a positive for either team. He was just a negative for the fans and for the right, game. Right. And that's Carl Hess, who really was whistle happy in that first half. I think if you looked at the half, you'd probably see that he was making some calls out of his area. He just dominated the game, and I don't ever want to see a referee dominate the game, or at least the first half. He calmed down in the second yeah, half. Yeah, okay. So then that's the Michigan State game, right? Yeah, the yeah. Michigan State game. Carl Hess, obnoxious whistleblower. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to the NFL. I like to go there, and it's not a Bronco-related thing, so relax. I'm going to go with Tennessee Titans quarterback Zach Mettenberger, who – Earlier this week said something about Odell Beckham Jr.'s catch. Incredible catch a couple of weeks ago against the Cowboys. You all might have seen it. It was one of these and probably way cooler looking than that. But Zach Mettenberger, who was Odell Beckham Jr.'s quarterback at LSU, came out in an interview and said, oh, he's had better catches. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, look, that's cool. You know the guy. That's cool. You're BFFs. That's cool. You've thrown some balls to him. But that was an unbelievable catch, one of the best of all time. You can't tell me he's had better catches. And you trying to do that is obnoxious, especially when you're kind of still a nobody. So knock that off. Willie Mays told me the Vic Wirtz catch was nowhere near his best catch. He said what made that a great play was the throw. There and you if go. you look at it, That's awesome. both the catch and especially the throw are amazing. That's awesome. The transition time between the two was incredible, too. I yeah. Mean, that was amazing. He was amazing. Yeah. The greatest baseball player in my lifetime. Wow. Awesome. I'm going to go with Billy Butler for that one, but that's a different story. <laughs> all right. contract. Yeah, there you go. No doubt. All right. Well, that's all the time we have. Thanks to Santa Claus and all of you for watching KU Sports Extra. And uh, stay to KUSports.com for all the coaching search news and, of course, coverage of KU basketball. We'll talk to you guys next time here at KU Sports Extra.